this is the style of digging stick our ancestors used to use. <clears throat> and it's got a little place here for your foot. So you're going along planting, and you just put that in the ground, just move it back and forth to create a little, uh, little place, drop the seeds in there and cover it over. You don't need a uh, horse and a plow, you don't need a tractor, you don't need a planter. I say that, but then imagine at Ganondagan in central New York, Seneca Village in 1686, there were 5,000 people living there. That's a whole lot of planting. Right? When the French came and destroyed the village, they said there was half a million bushels of corn stored at that one village. You realize uh, half a million bushels of corn? That would fill up this room four times over. Look at this drawing from uh, 18, I mean 1686. It's a Mohawk winner from uh, Gunawake who are, had this long uh, hole for both for cultivating and cutting weeds down. And it, it was either a big piece of bone or, or wood, and it had this rawhide thong attached to it so that it would uh, be strong, wouldn't break. So we see the digging stick, and then we see this hoeing and clearing, because in the old days, the women would have hoed the field maybe only twice or three times after you plant. You have to. Remember I said corn needs us to grow? It needs us to keep the weeds down, because the weeds will overtake it. So um, that hoeing was a very important part, and that's where uh, everybody would be out there helping out. <coughs> We're famous for having what they call mound agriculture. And um, although these mounds are a little too tightly spaced, it would be more like in the old days. This is one mound, a little bit bigger than this table, and maybe there's the other one. You need a lot of space in between because the, what's your plant is going to take over all of that space. But mound agriculture does a couple of things. It creates this safe place for the plants. You can walk around here and you're not going to compact that soil where the plants are growing. You plant the three sisters together, the corn, the pole beans go up the corn, the squash and that go around the hill. Some people would plant um, Jerusalem artichokes or sunflowers other things between that. So this gives you an idea of what the old style planting was like. First, there were probably four or five corn seeds put in a mound. So you'll get a couple of stalks. The idea here is that you'll at least get two. Maybe two will die or won't make it. Then you plant the beans kind of kitty corner because the beans are going to grow up the corn stalks. And then you plant the squash around it. In some drawings, they would have it Corn here, squash here, corn here. I'm, I'm not sure about that. If you're planting them together, they help each other, and it makes sense. Not too many of our people do this anymore. But when you think they used to do this style of farming to feed a village of 5,000 people, it must have worked. Today, when we plant separately, because we've mechanized farming, corn, you know, beans, squash, we we're interrupting the relationship that exists between the three sisters. And as we'll see, um, it's, it's a very important relationship because they help each other. So this is just a rough idea of what that mound garden could look like. Three sisters working together. You see the corn coming up in the middle of, of that mound there. And this is probably maybe a little bit more like it. Look how big that is. The corn would be growing. Big squash and its big leaves covers that. The mound stays moist, but not overly wet. It's aerated. Uh, it's warmer because it's uh, compacted uh, together. So it's like an ideal place uh, to grow. We, as we're cultivating, can walk around the mounds and not impact on that. Because even modern um, farming will tell you that. If you're walking on the soil where you're planting, you're compacting it and you're reducing the ability of the soil to be productive. So you want to have these channels where you walk, but you want to leave this as, uh, as much undisturbed soil as you can get. There's a story that uh, our ancestors used fish as a fertilizer. And that when they're in these mounds, they would throw these fish in there. Now, archaeologically, there's not much evidence of this, but it's a persistent story among our people. And they say the reason why is that a long time ago, uh, uh, a drought hit one of our communities. Things weren't growing too well. And the herons, now one of our clan animals, they saw this. They saw how the people were suffering. And the, and a, and the heron is what? He, he's he's the, the fisherman. A heron, you ever watch him in the water? The reason why they got long legs, they walk real slow. 
and, and they wait for that fish to go by, and as soon as they do, bam, they, they, they shoot down and grab that fish. So when the herons saw the, that the crops weren't growing well, they went fishing, they came, to the, came up on the, into the garden, and they planted those fish that they uh, caught, and then the plants came up. So in this, this uh, painting here, we see the people out in the field taking the fish, putting them in there, and so that the, uh, the corn won't grow.